Hi, it's Dawn again. I'm back for another series of Wooly Wednesday that comes out on Thursdays and we film it on Fridays. How exciting is that? So half the week we're doing wool. It's so fun. Um, this week I thought I would share with you some of the kits that we have here at Always in Stitches in Noblesville, Indiana. And uh, I was going to focus on these door banners that we have. I just love them. This is the winter one. They're all the same size, so you can just exchange them out for the seasons. This is the fall one. This is the summer. And this is the spring. And we don't have a sample made yet, but I'm going to work on that this week, okay? But it's a good thing because now I can show you what comes in the kit. All the pieces that you need, all the wool has already been pre-fused and pre-cut. So if you're a beginner and you want to start with something that's simple and ready to go, this would be the project for you. And I love these door uh, hangers because they just are cheery. They welcome the um, company into the house. You just hang it on your front door. You could put it in a wreath. You could hang it from a chair back uh, that's sitting in your garden. Oh my goodness, the things that you could do with this little banner is so fun. So let me start by going over my workspace with you, okay? This is how I set up at home. If I'm at home and I'm doing a wool project, I, on my desk I always have this tray. You can use any kind of a tray, but what this does is it corrals all my little pieces. I cannot tell you how many times the wool just wants to get up and walk away. It ends up on the floor, it ends up in my sleeve, it ends up attached to my pants. It just, I don't know what it is about it. It's like that sock that's in the dryer, you know, it just wants to escape. So I kind of corral everything here in my little tray. And then I have a little container I put all my snippets and trash in so that it also doesn't go everywhere and anywhere. I always keep my body Bible with me because if I forget how to do something or I need a little bit of a reminder, anything I want to know is right here in my Bible. I also have my, uh, my um, needle case with me all the time and my scissors. Now, if I was getting a kit and it wasn't already prepared for me, I would need to use a um, fusible a fusible <laughs> interfacing, that's the word I wanted to use, a fusible interfacing. The brand I like, now everybody has their own personal choice, you know what I'm saying? It's just like underwear, you have your own favorite brand, you have your own favorite uh, thimble, you know, all those kind of things. Well, this is my favorite kind of soft fuse. Um, it comes in a package of 10 8 and a half by 11 sheets. It comes in three one yard sheets. Or if you want to make a living at doing wool applique, it comes in a big gigantic roll like this. How fun is that? My goodness, what kind of appliques could you do with that? Big ones, let me tell you. Okay, so back to my project. Got all my pieces out of my bag here. And where the die has cut them out, it leaves a little piece here that you just have to snip off on each side. And look how easy that is. Your pieces are all prepared for you right there. Awesome. I mean, how much easier can that be? So you go through and you'd cut all, all your pieces. You take your background, I'd press it if I were you. Now we're gonna follow the manufacturer's recommendations on this, except for we are gonna use steam. Okay, you want to steam your fusibles down. 
So what I would do is I get out my pattern. It has the full sheet of all the pieces that you need. So if you want to make an, another one, you've got the pattern. You can come into the shop, get the wool that you want, and uh, design it yourself. Where'd my other piece of paper go? There it is. And then it also shows you the outline. Now this is an important piece. I'm going to keep it in front of me because it's going to tell me where to put my pieces. So I'm going to start with the basket. And I can see here on my layout that I'm going to need to leave a little bit of room here for my welcome. So I'm going to move that up. Just like that. Should have had my welcome cut out. Now I've removed the outside piece of my fusible. So now I call my fusible my glue. So here's my glue, the other side of my glue. And when I press that with the heat and the steam of the iron, that's going to glue that piece right down onto my background and it's not going to move and come up on me. And what I would do is I go ahead and I would cut out all the pieces that you needed for the project and fuse everything at once. And then once everything's fused and in place and not going to go anywhere, you can start the stitching and that's when the piece becomes very portable. You don't have to be uh, at home and you know, in a workspace, you can be at the doctor's office or the hospital or um, at the soccer game. You can do whatever you want. That's why I love this. Where'd my W go? It's terrible when you lose your W, you know what I mean? So see how I can just manipulate that? Hey, what if I wanted to curve it a little bit? The design doesn't show it curved, but you know what? It's my project. I can do what I want to with it. If I wanted to add a little curve to the lettering, I could do that. Look at that. How pretty. But I'm going to make sure I take this paper off. Look, it comes off really easy. You just peel it back. You place it in place. I'll peel this piece off. Look at how pretty. I love the way this gold color just comes right off of that dark green background. That is so pretty. And I love the weave of this basket wool. Isn't that pretty? Oh, I like that. Now see, I didn't do that on any of the other ones. They're all just straight, just like the pattern. But, you know, to make it my very own, I just kind of like that curved like that. So, you'll figure out that there's going to be ways you can buy a kit and do it your own way and make it your own. Look at how fun that is. Then I would just place the tulips in place, you know, put all the stuff in place where it goes after I get it all cut out. Then I would take it to my um, ironing board and it might even be good to do this right on the ironing board so you don't have to move it somewhere and press it all with the very highest heat and the very most steam that you can put in the iron. So, and use your iron steam the way the iron says. Don't, if it takes distilled water, put distilled water in. If it takes just uh, water out of the faucet, use that. Whatever your, your iron recommends because I know my iron at home recommends that I do half and half. So you have to kind of pay attention to that. Um, once I get everything in place and I fuse everything down, then when I pick this up, it's just ready to go and ready to stitch. On the back of my pattern is a list of all the fibers that this artist recommends for this project. If you have 
fibers at home, let's say for instance, this one uses Valdani pearl cotton, but you have a humongous stash of DMC floss. Just take the wool piece to your floss or bring your floss to your wool piece and just look at the color. You want to match what you're appliquing. You don't want to match the background. You want to match what you're appliquing too. So when I'm appliquing this piece down, I'm going to use this color. And when I'm doing my welcome, I'm going to use a gold color. So nothing says you have to use the pearl cotton. It is beautiful and it does work out wonderful, but use what you have. That's always uh, my best advice. So that's what we've got for today. Again, it's Wooly Wednesday on Thursday, filmed on Friday. Hope to see you next Wednesday.